Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and in today's video I am doing a long-awaited art book collection review video. <laughs> um, I've been asked to kind of do one of these videos just sort of sharing my art book collection and showing what I use for reference and what helps inspire me. First of all, I definitely would like to make a disclaimer that this video is in no way bragging about what I have. I have been collecting art books for quite a few years and I am an adult. I did have a job and a disposable income, so I spent a lot of my money, pretty much all of it, you know, besides the essentials, on putting back into my artwork, whether it be supplies, books, reference stuff, or camera equipment. So again, in no way am I bragging about what I have. So I'm basically gonna break this video down into a couple of sections. Um, first off, I'm gonna start with some art of books, which I think you'll find is very typical in a lot of artist collections. <laughs> and I'll just go through some of those. So first of all, one book that I really love is The Art of Lowish. Um, I do have a flip through and unboxing video of this, which I will link if you do want to see that, I don't really want to go through it too much again, but I will do a quick flip through. Um, Lois is an artist that I've been following for a number of years and I love her digital painting. If you don't know her, please go check her out. Um, another book that I already do have a video flip through for is The Art of Fallout 4. Now, I saw this and I absolutely had to buy it even though I couldn't really afford it at the time and I was trying not to spend money on things that weren't essential but I had to get this fall it has been definitely a huge inspiration to me and I really wanted to have a collection of you know all the detail that we went into this game just I love seeing the behind the scenes of game art it definitely shows all the work that goes into it and so many different ideas and concepts that don't make it to the final game and yet you can see how artists work and how they develop their ideas they don't just go with the first sketch or the first idea that they come up with. They draw things in various different poses and different styles and slight variations to find what really works. And that's one thing I definitely think a lot of artists, it's something that I definitely didn't used to do, which was really explore ideas and the different facets and possibilities for them. So if you are a Fallout fan and an art fan, I would definitely suggest getting this book. Um, I absolutely love it. I turn to it a lot for inspiration lately. I am doing a lot of Fallout artwork, however, <laughs> I haven't shared much of it yet because I'm not quite happy, but I will be sharing that soon. So if you are a Fallout fan, um, you know, hit subscribe. <laughs> Um, another book that I have, which is definitely um, a favourite of my collection and I got from my friend Keshi, so thank you Keshi, is um, The Art of Okami. Okami was a huge inspiration to me when I was a teenager and the style and the game has really touched me and been with me since then. I think it's almost, it's about almost 10 years since I first played the game. I love the art over Kami, I love the characters. If you haven't played the game, I would definitely suggest it. It's one of my favorite games of all time. It's very illustrative and very true to its origins. Just really love this book. It's something that's great to sort of turn to and see, again, different things that didn't quite make it into the game or just sketches and scenes from it and some posters at the back here. Another book that I have here is The Art of District 9. I was a fan of the District 9 movie and I really love a lot of the design. I do actually quite like a lot of sci-fi stuff even though I think I'm more of a fantasy fan. There was so much work that went to this and I actually really do like aliens and monsters and creatures and the whole idea of developing these characters and creatures and still having you know human aspects has definitely been a huge part of my work, definitely in a much different way than this. But I was so, again, so inspired about all the work that went into this and just a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. And you can just, some of these drawings are just absolutely amazing. I love concept artwork and so many people do. It's just, yeah, it's so inspiring. And it's nice to look, again, at something that might not be exactly my style or something that I would feel comfortable drawing but sometimes it's just good to get inspiration from things outside of your creative box and I definitely encourage people to do that. Another book that I have today is The Art of Spirited Away. I am a huge Miyazaki and Studio Ghibli fan. I think a lot of that shows up in my work as well that they have been a huge inspiration on my illustration style and a lot of the themes within my artwork. So I'll just give a quick flip through of this book. Um, this is the only one I have from the Ghibli 
collection I would love to own more um, like Howl's Moving Castle and The Cat Returns are one of my some of my favorite Ghibli films as well a lot of this book is um, stills from the movie and just a little bit behind the scenes about character sketches and scenery I love all of this it's so beautiful there's one thing I wish I was better at and I need to practice more is scenery and backgrounds to really set the mood about the characters and where they are and yeah definitely books like this really help to inspire me and think outside of what I would normally do and really push myself beyond my own limitations. The next book I have today is The Art of Dreamworks Animation. I saw this when I went to the exhibition in Melbourne at the Acme um, which was yeah the Dreamworks animation and I really loved it. This book is still really great it goes through so many different films from Dreamworks and especially How to Train Dragon I love that film. Um, however I found I just wish there was more I wish there was more behind the scenes stuff for certain movies and certain characters that I like but they had so many that they wanted to try and get in this book I think they did they did really well it has a nice mixture it is a really nice book that has good layout and good behind the scenes stuff for many different films so if you are a DreamWorks fan or an animation fan definitely get this I love a lot of these paintings and seeing them in person at the exhibition was amazing. Yes, yeah, Sinbad is definitely one of my favourites. Um, yeah, I'll just do a quick flip through and Spirit. Just some beautiful, beautiful work here from behind the scenes of many of their different films. Another book I have today is How to Train Your Dragon. I actually do have one and two. I love both of these movies. I'll give a very quick flip through. Um, these are just good to have as like a referencing, especially if you do love the movies. But again, love seeing the development of the characters, how they could have turned out is so interesting. How these artists works is definitely, definitely something that I would like to apply more to, apply more to my own sketches and sketchbooks. Really developing ideas, being able to, f to move freely from one idea to another without getting too hung up on making everything absolutely perfect or absolutely how you want it to be. I think art is definitely a journey more than a finished product. Number two again develops into how the characters changed for the second movie and some of the obviously the introduction of new characters and new dragons. Um, I love the layout of these books, they're done really really well. Each page has something interesting on it, something new as well. Um, they're really quite full of sketches, full of ideas no one page is boring it's just so much to take in and to look at and it's great as a reference if you're doing fan art as well and looking at I love I love it when they say they've done photography and research into their final paintings it didn't just come from their heads they did do real life research I'm sure many of you are probably thinking oh these are so many great art of books I really want them, I can't afford them, or I can't justify having them in my collection or buying them. And I just want to, to really point out with this video that I draw a lot of my art book collection and a lot of my inspiration, not just from art of books or specifically art books that show painters and stuff like that. I have a lot of reference books that, again, really inspire me. I bought these books secondhand and they are definitely not brand new or anything like that. And they're just encyclopedias about different dog breeds and they break them break them down. I love drawing dogs and cats and different animals because there's so much variation within species and that's something that really interests me. So these were definitely something that I, I have used quite a lot and enjoyed having in, in my collection. And again, I bought them secondhand. A lot of the books that I own are bought secondhand from online or from book sales or from library sales so definitely keep an eye out for those sorts of things if you're wanting to expand your art book collection but not necessarily spend you know forty dollars per book on art of books or it, they can get really expensive so encyclopedia reference books are really great and I have a lot more um, animal reference books photography books or just even little guidebooks about different species I <laughs> for those who know me really well and my friends in real life know that I am obsessed with bats I have always loved them even like ever since I was really little, ever since I was in junior primary school people would ask you know what's your favourite animals, a lot of girls would say horses and dolphins and stuff and I would say bats and be looked at like a freak but I love, absolutely love bats, micro and macro bats so I've got a few reference books of those. Um, this is a really nice photography book called Birds of Prey and I got this because 
Birds are something that are really hard to draw and also get in different poses because they move quite quickly and that's something that's quite hard to study in real life. So a book like this really helps me and I love looking at it for when I'm trying to think about different poses and different angles and how birds are actually constructed because they're really quite intricate creatures. So that's Birds of Prey, just like a nice photography book. It's a great as a coffee book as well and good as an artistic reference. I also have a few, again these are secondhand ex library books, Riches artworks are definitely, definitely really popular, they have been, you know, when he was alive and even today still so many artists are influenced by his Art Nouveau style and the way that he draws and the way that he composes images, definitely is something that quite commercial, quite pleasing to the eye and I've always loved his stuff. And I just had to get this book of his different sketch and stuff. Again, this is an ex-library book. And moving on, I'm just going to show very quickly a couple of other books I have. Again, they're really great for reference and inspiration, but many of these are actually by other artists. So not anything I would ever reference directly because they're not from photographs. Um, but some more bird illustrations I love. So this is a brush with birds and it's um, basically it's an Australian book and there's several different Australian artists I believe or about Australian birds. I got this when I saw I think The Art of Science at the Adelaide Museum and I love this book because there's so many different styles and different time periods about illustration and again birds are an, always an interesting and difficult subject to paint sometimes. So that's a book that I really love have in my collection. <laughs> Another bird book. I'm not obsessed with birds, I swear. Um, and this is by William T. Cooper. I loved this book. He really goes into a lot of detail. He's a great illustrator and does birds really well. But he also goes into a great detail about, you know, how to paint and how to capture not just birds but wildlife in general. I love a lot of his studies about the different anatomy and different aspects of birds. So this is something that um, I definitely feel was good for me to have in my collection because I love drawing birds and I love drawing animals and he also does do a couple of his step by steps and a little bit of information about his process in that book. Moving on to this one, this is just like a really interesting book that I guess technically is not really an artistic reference book. It could be just an interesting coffee book or just something really cool to own. It's called The Resurrections and it's by E.B. Hudspeth, <laughs> I think that's how it's pronounced. It's a really beautiful book. Um, and it's kind of like a mythology book in a sense that um, the premise of the book is basically oh these are the lost works of Dr. Black and it goes into anatomy and breakdowns of different sort of um, mythological creatures like mermaids and hippogriffs and just so much and I love that it's got a bit of a story as well relating to the background of these ideas and this book so that's definitely really cool the resurrectionist um, if you're interested I will link some books down below if I can find them online um, and another book that I have in my art book collection section of my shelves is um, Alice's Adventure in Wonderland and this is il illustrated by Camille Rose Garcia who was one of my favorite artists a few years ago um, I love her use of color and just the way she paints her characters in the background quite sinister so definitely like I read this book very very carefully when I got it um, it's one of my favorite things in my collection it's just a nice book to have and I still find inspiration in her artwork with her bold use of color and the way it's almost like acid like dreamscape so she's still an inspiration to me again moving on with more books from my collection and going along with the animal and imagined themed this is Animals Real and Imagined with Terrell Whit Whitlash. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, I'm really sorry. <laughs> really breaks down um, realistic animals, sketching form, doing their anatomy and their skeletal structure, as well as going into more cartoony aspects. I love this book because it shows, she really shows that yes, you know, a lot of cartoonists really do need to have quite a good knowledge of animal anatomy before they can bend things and make them look realistic. She then translates it into a way of making imagined creatures look realistic based on the anatomy and muscle structure and different aspects from real world animals. And it's really, it's a really nice book, not just, not only to look at, but be inspired in a way that trying to make my visions come to life in a more realistic manner 
and yeah I really I love I love her work it's so beautiful and oh, just look at this. It's so beautiful <laughs> So if you're interested, I would definitely recommend this book if you are interested in drawing animals or if you just like the artwork. <laughs> Another book I have here, shout out to my friend Tsunami, who um, I bought this book from her. She did Inktober, I think it was 2014, and she did an exhibition and sold so many of them so quickly. And myself and a few other people were like, please, please put out a book because we want to own these pieces and they're just so brilliant. I love Tsunami's artwork so much, so if you're watching this, I'm sorry I'm such a fan girl. <laughs> it's amazing when you look at it and realise that she's done fully finished illustrations each day, not just sketches or things like that. And again, all of this was, I think, pretty much done mainly with um, just ink and a brush. I love all of these because not only do I love Tsunami's style, but she is so great at telling stories through her illustrations and all of her characters are so relatable and there's so much emotion portrayed. I love this piece right here. I was really, really wanted to own the original, but of course it didn't happen. <laughs> but yeah, I'm so glad that I got to own this book. I love looking at her artwork. It's so beautiful and she is just so talented and she's such a beautiful soul. <laughs> um, I will link, if you are interested in Tsunami's work, I will give a link to her artist page if you would like to check her out. She is such an amazing artist and yeah, really love this book. I'm so glad to have this in my collection and I'm so glad that she made this. Moving on to some more probably typical things that a lot of artists do have in their book collection or reference collection, a magazine. So I'm pretty sure almost everyone has heard of Imagine FX. I only have a couple of the physical copies of these in my collection. I think they're great. I love that they have tutorials and Q&A and behind the scenes and sketch pages. They're really quite chock full of so much information from so many different types of artists. And every now and then they release different periodicals. So I think this one is a special peanut one, but they have different themes each time. They've released a few anatomy um, editions as well. It's not something that I can afford to collect frequently and not something that I get a whole lot of use out of personally because I'm not a huge fan of a lot of step-by-step -step books. That's one thing you will not find in my collection. I don't really have anything really against them. Just personally, even growing up, I didn't find that I got much use from them. I found that it was a lot more helpful to me to actually look at something and learn how to draw or draw from my head and do my own research because a lot of the step-by-step -step books didn't really have what I was interested in drawing or the style that I wanted to do. One thing that step-by-step -step art books can teach you though and really good for a lot of younger artists is basically how to break down different objects into shapes, into simple shapes that you can draw and recreate. That's definitely a skill that a lot of people I think need to have in order to become you know that step from a good artist to a great artist. <laughs> Continuing on with magazines, I did used to have a huge collection of juxtapose that was kind of like second hand and I got rid of all of those and I don't buy this again, I don't buy this frequently. Um, for me, I can't afford it and it's a waste of money to buy a monthly or even like a fortnightly um, magazine subscription because not every issue to me is going to be relevant to what I want or have anything that's interest to me. So I have a couple of issues here that basically I got them because I love the certain artists on them. Juxtapose is definitely um, talks about a lot of different exhibitions and a lot of different artists and is probably a little bit... I, I guess like it's not just illustration that they focus on so I'm not sure if many people would be interested in juxtapose but I got this one because it has an artist I absolutely love um, I'm pretty sure he is an Australian and Melbourne artist called Jeremy Giddies this is his image on the front here he does amazing realistic paintings I guess I should say surrealistic I'll give a couple of examples here so these are his paintings and they, they look absolutely brilliantly realistic and so well done and so soulful. Um, this one here has got Audra Kawasaki in it, who is another artist I absolutely love. James Jean, I got this. He is definitely a hugely prolific artist who just does so much stuff and I really want to get one of his books at some point because he just does this amazing decorative sort of style. And yeah, to move on, uh, there's of course again some drawing magazines. High Fructose is um, another magazine as well. It's similar to Juxtapose. Um, I think, again, it sort of goes more about contemporary art, not always illustration. I think um, I'm more of a fan of High Fructose these days. Juxtapose I used to really like, 
but they changed their direction you know quite a few years ago and it's not really my scene anymore but again they do bring out some issues every now and then that show artists that I really love moving on as you can see I don't have step-by-step -step books I do have a lot of reference book whether it's like realistic reference um, a lot of artist books but also this is sort of a category of my real true artistic reference books or you know how to art books I don't really like too many how to make art books I did have um, a few that I either bought because I thought that I needed them or that were gifted to me but again it wasn't really the direction I wanted to go and it everyone learns differently that's one thing I have to say there's no one size fits all model of how to do art and how to learn how to do something so these are kind of books that I still have in my collection because they're useful this this book here my god okay this is a great it's a really little book it's a really simple thing about color theory and again you can find a lot of this information online from various different artists so don't feel like you have to buy books in order to learn how to be an artist or to how to develop your skills there's so much information online whether it be free stuff that's on DeviantArt or Tumblr or you know videos and, and things like that and tutorials so definitely I am no way saying that you need to own a lot of books or have any books in order to become a, a good artist or a good illustrator and develop your skill this book I found was really really helpful to me which is just basically a simple color theory book and it goes into different exercises about how to use color a lot of the basics which um, many people know anyway and it goes into a lot of the, the theory about it and it really helps break things down because sometimes I've just done things and it's like I really love this or I think this looks great but I don't really know why this works but it just does I love this book but anyway moving on this is another great drawing book I think it's kind of the same as this one here I, I first bought this one it's just like the art of drawing people and it goes into breaking down anatomy breaking down poses and different aspects of faces and how to basically render with pencil and and things like that it was a really good little book um, some of the styles in there aren't really my style but again it's a good little reference point point. and this one here I bought afterwards which I think is kind of has got some of that book in here it has a lot of stuff I really love this book it's a great little book that actually collects several different books into one like it really compacts it and goes into a lot of detail about again planning out facial proportions and how to draw portraits about you know different techniques you can do with ink and different techniques you can do with pencil and rendering it's quite a good book um, it was actually quite cheap for what it was as well and this one here is called drawing on the right side of the brain I haven't used this one too much it was actually given to me secondhand by I think a family member and I do know this book is very popular and it has been reprinted quite a few times over the years I've seen different versions of it and this is a type of book that pretty much anyone can pick up no matter what your skill or experience level is with art or drawing this is for anyone to pick up and it's like how to unlock your hidden artistic talent and it might not really apply to me but um, I have picked this up a few times or used this for drawing games with groups of friends basically um, different exercises things like blind contour drawings and continuous line drawings and different different exercises which I think is a good thing sometimes you need to be motivated to do a couple of little different things every now and then so and I just really wanted to end this video on a note looking back at a few books illustration books that I've had since I was very very young um, you don't need to buy specific art books or how-to books because you can find reference and inspiration anywhere anyway guys I really hope you enjoyed this video just having a quick look at some of my drawing and artistic reference books again this is in no way saying that I'm showing off what I own or that people need to have any all of these books in order to be a great artist or develop their skill it's definitely just wanting to share what I have and what I've found useful Anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry if I kind of rambled on a bit or skipped through a lot of books quite quickly. But if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.